So here's our completed board. It's now relatively safe to handle it after it's soaked in water for a while uh, without gloves, although you still want to avoid putting fingerprints in any critical place that you want to solder. Um, one tip is to leave the toner mask on until you are ready to solder it. Uh, you can go ahead and drill the holes first, but you still want to leave something to protect the copper from oxidizing uh, when you actually go to solder it, because most fluxes that you use for any uh, electronics are not terribly active and they won't lift too much oxide off. They're actually a uh, rosin mildly activated RMA solder. So unless you want to use acid solder and then clean up your board, which is highly uh, disrecommended and discouraged, uh, keep the solder mask on and when you're ready you can either sand it off or if you have a large board with a lot of solder mask, you can use acetone and paper towels to remove the uh, toner. Also, if you're going to handle with acetone, uh, do it outdoors or in a ventilated area or with a fume hood. So if you have access to one, go ahead and use it. Once your board's been etched, you can actually start to drill the holes for it. And you're going to be using a very fine drill bit. You can either use high-speed steel ones, which you can find either on DigiKey, or if you're very lucky, like myself, find it at uh, a hardware store or a specialty store near you. Um, uh, regardless, you want to be very careful when using drill bits. Uh, please wear eye protection. The alternative to high-speed steel dr uh, drill bits in a drill press are uh, tungsten carbide drill bits, which they use in the industry to actually uh, drill the uh, circuit board holes. They are very tough and resilient, however, they shatter fairly easily. It's a little bit of a... Um, contradictory statement, but let me explain. The tungsten carbide tips are very uh, resilient to drilling and they're resistant to wear. However, any lateral motion, if this is your workpiece, any lateral motion will cause the drill bit to shatter. So if you're going to be using a Dremel, see if you can build some sort of rig. Maybe you can make a mini drill press using your Dremel or your other rotary tool. Um, another key point is that if you're going to be using tungsten carbide, you need a high uh, drill bit speed. Uh, regular drill presses will simply not cut it. Uh, otherwise, with a drill press, make sure that it functions properly. Uh, it has low wobble in the arbor. Make sure you've put it in the chuck properly, and then you're ready to go. And there you go. It's an easy, relatively quick, cheap printed circuit board. Uh, not all the tolerances are exact just because I'm uh, trying to do this quickly for the video. However, you can do these and take your time and build them very, very well. And if you are uh, very lucky, you can actually get all the materials for these and start building your own circuit boards. Um, the larger circuit boards start to cost a lot of money. Some of the disadvantages, though, of this method is it's trickier to do uh, double-sided and it's impossible to do uh, four-layer boards. But for single-layer and some dual-layer designs, it's going to be much cheaper than any um, manufacturing house. However, you won't get uh, solder mask and uh, the silk screen on your board. So you're going to need to print out what, what your component values are and carefully populate your board. But it's still cheaper. There are some advantages and disadvantages, which I'll also address in the article. Here's another neat trick. Once you have your boards done, and you start uh, getting better at them, you can make lots of little utility boards and panelize your designs. Uh, what I've actually done before is make an entire uh, board of SMD adapters. These can be maybe 50 cents to a dollar a piece, but when you start to get to the, some of the more funky designs, not all stores carry them. Um, it's up to you and your skill as to how fine you can get your uh, circuit boards down to, but you can do pretty well but you can actually save a lot of money this way as well because that circuit board probably only costs about one dollar versus twenty dollars worth of uh, SMD adapters so experiment learn and have fun another issue I wanted to address was disposal of etchant after you are uh, done etching or you have too much or when your solution has become too saturated and you don't want to dilute it down to make more etchant uh, with ferric chloride etchant, disposal is a tricky business because you have a mixture of both iron and copper compounds in solution. And it's, it's tricky to extract 
each one apart from each other and actually dispose of them properly or furthermore reuse them uh, as copper or iron uh, chemicals that are actually useful. So with cupric chloride etchant it's actually uh, fairly simple. Um, what you have in your bottle is pretty much copper 2 chloride and hydrochloric acid. Now copper 2 chloride when the pH falls will turn into copper oxide. So what you can do is use some sodium hydroxide pellets. Uh, it's 500 grams, probably about 10 to 15 dollars Canadian. And you can find these at uh, some science or chemistry stores, some biology, microbiology labs may have it. Um, but you can find some of this stuff and actually carefully mix it slowly in. Uh, I only recommend this to people who have actual chemistry experience when mixing uh, strong acids with strong bases. Um, but regardless, you can use the sodium hydroxy hydroxide to neutralize the acid and eventually it will turn into a thick black paste containing copper oxide which you can filter, dry, and uh, remove any uh, sodium chloride as a result of the reaction uh, and then dry it up again. And then once you have that you can grind it down into a relatively fine powder or some granules and you can actually use the stuff uh, to copper plate. You can mix copper oxide with some sulfuric acid and you get copper sulfate which you can use to copper plate circuit boards, jewelry, um, or other uh, pieces of metal. But for the most part this is the simplest disposal method for this. If you cannot find sodium hydroxide uh, you can also use baking soda in large amounts um, however, you will get the neutralization that occurs between baking soda and any acid with the release of carbon dioxide, which takes a long time to deal with, and you probably won't be able to get as much copper oxide, but it will still work. Otherwise, please dispose of your chemicals properly. Do not throw anything down the drain. Uh, if you are absolutely forced to dispose of it in the garbage, boil down your etchant carefully and dry it and then place it into some kind of sealed container and take it to a hazardous waste depot. Nothing down the drain, nothing down the sewers. Thank you very much.